Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the channel, Thrift here. I'm going to answer one of the most popular questions that I get on a daily basis, both on the YouTube channel and over on Twitch when I'm streaming. That question is what to play and how to make that class great. It's such a double-ended question because, in all honesty, I would say 90 to 95% of the classes are great by themselves as long as you can get a decent equipment and spells list around them. But that's pretty difficult to figure out when you're first starting the game. There's so much equipment, uh, you don't have all the spells unlocked, so how, where do you even begin with your character? You know, something to think about is it's going to be a process that you have to fine tune over time. Uh, but let me at least give you some tips on how to begin this process and at least get yourself on the right footing. Uh, so I'm just going to do a really quick overview about my character so you can kind of understand where a, the thought process comes from. And then we are just going to click a random character. We'll start that character and we will try to make a build as good as possible. So for my character, this is my character. This is the Kra class, Shaden Shiru. My process is to always look at the passive first. This is the most important thing. This is going to define your character. So my character says here, when your hero teleports, it's minus one action point to the cost of your next spell. So I am going to try to teleport as much as possible. And this is really going to define all of the cards that I use in my deck. The next most important thing you should do for any character is click on the little button here, go to your passive screen, and you should be looking at the four purple crystals in the middle. At level 15, you will unlock one of these crystals, and that is going to be such an important upgrade to your character. It is going to improve on your passive and really lay the bricks down of where you are leading with your character. Uh, so I have two here because I did hit level 30. The first one that I pick up that I did pick up was this one right here called Shade and Alignment. This says when my hero teleports, I, infl I inflict 5% of my max health on opponents in line with them. So I now know what my character wants to do. I want to jump around because it makes my spells quit cheaper, but I want to jump around where enemies are in line with me so I can do damage. And it's my health that's doing that damage. The more health I have, the more damage I do. So with these two pieces of information, I have an idea of how my character is gonna play. I wanna run around like a jumping bane. I wanna hit as many characters as I can bouncing around, but I want a lot of health because that's going to improve my damage a lot more uh, than, say, just improving attack power or anything. Because I can teleport, most likely I can teleport a lot, because if that's a passive, there's probably a lot of cards that can help me. So now that I know what I want to do, I'm going to go over to the deck next. Now in my deck, my first thing I did with this character, I put anything that had Archer in its name into my deck because Archer gives me this ability that teleports me to the closest cell to the edge of the board. Well, that is a card that costs zero and it is a teleport. So I am accommodating both my initial passive plus that level 15 passive I would acquire, right? And so I'm gonna go around and I'm gonna grab all of these cards that can uh, give me Archer, here's a few. And then I also have some character specific cards um, that teleport me. This one, I teleport to a hero adjacent to me. This one, I teleport up to two cells away from me. So I have a bunch of cards that can teleport me. Every time I teleport, I'm reducing the cost of my spells. And every time I teleport at level 15, I'm going to start doing damage. Bada bing. We have the core elements of what we're going to do with this deck without even getting into the equipment, without even getting into companions. We at least understand how is our character going to play. And you could be level one and figure this out. That's the beauty of this. You just have to just take a step to look into it. You're going to have to unlock cards over time. But if you know what you're looking for when these cards unlock, you're going to find that card and be like, hey, that's really good for my deck. The next thing you absolutely can and should look into are the character and class cards. There's a lot of character cards that are going to help you. Say this one uh, gives me that archer card. This one teleports me. And so does this one. This one also teleports. Okay, great cards for my build. And then there might be some class cards that could help you as well. Uh, this one lets me teleport. This one just lets me draw extra cards. But you get what I'm saying. You're going to start with the elemental cards and then go into the, uh, the class cards and character cards. See if there's anything else there that can help you. So now that we know what we're doing, we kind of got the idea of a spell list. There's a couple things I want you to look at because when it comes to equipment, there is a bunch of bonuses. There is a bunch of stats that you can aim for. So the first thing I would always look into 
what type of elements are we running with our deck? If we are running primarily one type of element, that means that we can very easily amplify the damage of that one type of element if we are focusing on spells. In this case, that is not really the case. I do run, say, more water skills than I do lightning skills, uh, but it wouldn't benefit me to find something that gives me extra water damage uh, compared to some classes where well, they will only run one type of card. Well, if you're only one, running one type of card, it's really easy to improve damage by finding equipment that improves that type of damage. For example, uh, let me find it. Um, let's see, where is it? There's a water ring down here. Well, here, for example, ventilated. Uh, if I was running a lot of air cards, I could run vent this card right here, the ocarina ring, which will apply ventilated and uh, give me extra damage for my next air spell. Um, you know, here's another one. When you draw a fire spell, reduce the cost of it by one action point. It's a 50% chance of happening. So, you know, there's these very, very specific element rings. So if you're running one type of element, these are going to be really valuable. Um, if you're not running a single type of element, you have a bunch of other questions. And that's where it really comes down. You kind of just need to type this out to yourself. What's important to my character? In this case with my character, health is the most important thing. Because my primary way of doing damage is just jumping around. Of course I'm doing damage with skills, right? But if I can use a skill to jump and do damage, I do more damage. So health is kind of like that double-edged sword for me. It's not only doing damage, but it's going to keep me alive. So with my build, one of the most important things going into it is health. So with that in mind, I started my process by looking for rings that could give me health. Here I have one ring right here at the start of fight. It just, go, it just goes ahead and gives me 20% health. I have a couple other rings that do different things. But one of the most important stats you need to look at, you need to look at this second section right here. This thing that says plus three health to your hero. This thing says plus seven health to your hero. One important thing about all of these equipment, you have these little substats down below, plus 1% health to your hero, plus 1% to your air spells. These bonuses, when you upgrade the ring, these will always improve by one or 2%, however much per level. So in this case, if I were to upgrade this ring, it's going to increase the health and damage to air spells by 1% additional. So this is going to be one of the longest grinds to your, to your character, but one of the most important things to look into. If an air spell is really important to your deck, so would the damage be to your character, and then you're getting some health. Well, what if you were a, an attack-based focused melee character using your main attack? Well, you could start looking at cards that instead of giving one health to your companions or one health to your hero, one attack to your hero. Of course, you want the main stat to be important, but getting 1% attack, the max level in the game right now is 50. That means at some point, that's going to be plus 50% attack. You can see how important these pat these like substats are. If you have a lot of cool rings with effects, but you're getting plus health and you're an attack-based character, well, you're not going to be doing a lot of attack compared to somebody who did prioritize these substats. So always look into those substats. This is going to be very important for your deck. Now let's look back at my build and see what I have here. I have this ring here. It gives me 20 health, but every time I level up, it's giving me additional health. This ring right here, it's giving me, it's really not anything I want, but it's giving me passive health. It's giving me a cool little bonus. It's giving me additional health whenever I find commons of it. So I want that. I want that extra percent health. This third ring, this is a very important ring to my deck. It lets me draw an additional spell, but the most important thing to me Gives me a great ability, but it's giving me health every time I can level it up. These common rings are much easier to find, so I'm going to be getting a lot of additional health stats every time I get more health. You know, I'm at level 30. You don't see the 20% health here, but I'm at like almost 1100 health at level 30. I'm doing like 50 plus damage when I teleport around. Really cool. And then, hey, sometimes epic rings, legendary rings are going to be really important to your build. This is probably one of the most important rings for any class and character, the Jelly Ring. At the start of the turn, if you have a 15-card deck, I'm getting extra reserve action points. The passives don't help me much, but you know, in this case, I'm sacrificing the passive bonuses to make sure I get that really good skill here to give me one extra reserve action point. It's really important to my deck. So sometimes you have to pick and choose what you want. But look at these substats. These are going to be really important to define your build, okay? Now, question. You're just starting out in the game. I have no clue where to find any of these rings. Well, fear not. Once you get out of a strub and you can go to the world map, 
the best way to research these rings is go up here to the upper right hand corner, click on this little box. It's going to tell you what island and what you can drop and buy there. So you can start looking at all the companions. You can also look at the equipment. Uh, one equipment piece that I had been looking at quite a bit. Oh, hey, look, I could drop and farm my opulent ring. I could get copies and get that health up. I could also go get this ring. It's called the Ophthalma ring. It gives uh, my companions extra health, but it gives me health every time I level it up. Well, I'm kind of curious what I could level up with runes, right? You know, I could run around here and I can keep looking, but I kind of want to see what I can level up with runes. So let's go over to Gobble Island. All of those rings, equipment, and, uh, and, and companions, you can buy at the shop. So if you go to the island shop, you can now see all of those rings here. If you click on that ring, you can now see all of the upgrades you can make to that ring with runes. This is not the most important thing right off the bat, but it is something to look into. You know, if health is really important to me, um, you know, this one's giving me extra health to my companions, but no extra health to me. So, okay, it's a good ring, but it doesn't have any later on additional benefits that I can get. Just something to also look into. You have the database at your fingertips. It's just the world map. So you just got to open up that world map and you can look through every single island, see what type of equipment you want. Now, um, of course, you're not going to be able to access those right away. Um, so you're not going to maybe be able to see all of the uh, equipment rune upgrades, but you can at least see the stat. You can see the substat so you know what's going to be leveling up as you increase the stats on this ring. So really awesome way that you can just research the armbands, rings, and then companions you want. Okay? So now that we have a better idea of, okay, what are we doing with our rings? So for my character here, right? Um, my character, we know that I want health. Three of my four rings are giving me health. This one's giving me a lot more health. I have an idea of mine, my deck. I made it a 15 card deck so I could draw an additional spell. I'm getting extra XP, AP, armbands. Same thing. The same thing's going to apply for an armband. Uh, just make sure it helps you. So in this case, my armband gives me rapid repositioning. So it's letting me teleport around. Every time I teleport, I'm doing more damage, right? So then for companions, you're just trying to massage both the spell list and the rings together, right? Um, sometimes your rings are going to help you summon companions. Maybe they'll make them stronger. Um, are companions important to your deck build? I personally never really have success finding good companions. Maybe that's just a curse of mine. Uh, but in this case, I'm running a lot of different spells. A lot of these spells have a lot of um, ether or a lot of gauge buildup. So it's easy for me to summon high cost spells So or high cost companions. So in my case, I just went ahead and said, hey, I'm going to put a ropo on the deck. I'm going to see if I can make it work. It's still a test in progress, work in progress. It may not work, but um, I have a lot of cards. This is the reason. This card right here was the reason I decided to add a fourth a water card so I could try to get to that four water gauge easier so you can see as you add things you're going to fine tune your build a bit uh, but the core elements should be there figure out what you're good with with the passive and the level 15 passive go to your spells to make a semi-decent spell list you're going to change that over time and once you have the passives and the spell list out of the way now you can really focus your attention on the equipment to try to find something really good so let's go ahead and just make a random character Let's go, let's go this character because I have a cross, so I would have more spells. So this character, um, let's go first start by looking at the power at the passive. My passive here says when I perform a combo, I'm going to get one powerful dart aura for my hero. Okay, so the card typing combo is going to be really important to this build. So I should be looking at spells that are going to have combo. When I perform a combo, I'm going to be getting additional auras. Those auras um they're gonna do additional damage to the target sounds like a really good play so i'm kind of already envisioning how this character is gonna play let's look into the passives and see what passives i would take at level 50 at level 15 um i can increase the damage of spells i play this turn um i can increase the dart aura damage and when i play a spell i increase it an additional 25 that sounds pretty good when you perform an attack you teleport to the first the first line in the cell and then when you release a powerful dart aura, this also does 75% of its damage to opponents in line. Well, from the original passive, I'm getting a lot of powerful, a lot of dart auras. I'm suspecting that's going to be the most important thing. So my eyes are already looking at dart aura bonuses. So we could either do this one to increase um, my dart aura by an additional 25, or I could do this one to do more damage to other creatures. Um, in either case, in this case, we're going to be focusing around these dart auras gathering dart auras playing combo cards so that's my play kind of already know that right let's go to a spell list 
So I'm going to start just ripping cards out of here, and I'm just going to look for anything with combo. And I'm pretty sure I can go here and go ch -ch -ch combo. I can get every card that shows up combo by typing in combo. Really easy way to search. I'm not even going to take too much time to look into this. I'm just going to grab pretty much every single card with combo. Is this going to be a perfect build? Absolutely not. However, what this is going to do, it's going to get cards with combo. Combo requires me to use a card first and then use it second. So, okay, this isn't the greatest build right now. I do need nine cards. So now let's just go ahead and figure out what we want to do for the rest of the cards. Um, these are a lot of low cost cards or like three AP cards, four AP cards. Um, no, I could probably go, you know, a lot of three AP cards as well of just different elements for now. Just so I make sure on my starting hand, I can go like three AP into another card to get that combo off. Um, let's see. Just a humor. I don't know. Let's just put it. Let's put a two card cost in here. We have a lot of these other two cost cards. Let's just do like two of them. Now, when it comes to decks, you can do anywhere from a nine card to a 15 card deck. How many cards should you run? You're going to work on that over time. A nine card deck is going to be more efficient since you start with five cards in hand. There's only four cards you could draw into. 15 card decks, you have those bonuses, as you saw with my other uh, with my other deck where I was drawing two cards per turn. So I was drawing a lot of cards at a 15 card deck. You'll you'll figure it out. OK, so here we are. Combo cards. I have combo cards in hand. Now, what am I going to do for equipment? So there's a couple things that I can do here. Um, I'm not really running an uh, like a single element, so I don't know how important that is. Um, one thing I do know is that powerful darts. Um, these would be based off of spell damage. So do I have any rings that would provide spell damage? That would increase the damage of all my spells, but also this powerful dart that I'm releasing. Um, so I know that there's a couple rings with spell damage, and I'm thinking that's probably the most important thing I could do here, um, since these darts are probably going to be an important part of my build. So uh, this card right here, at the start of my fight, I increase my uh, spell damage. So we'll go there. Um, I think there's another ring here. Yeah, so when I apply an... Oh, this is applying an elemental state. Do I apply elemental states? Well, I got one card here that applies an elemental state, another card here that applies elemental states. Well, hmm, maybe I put more cards into my elemental state. Um, what else could I do here? You could run hybrid rings. Since we are running a lot of elements, you can run these hybrid rings. Um, I think we're just going to stick to cheaper rings, though. When you play an elemental spell, 20% of the damage... If it's not the same element, this could be a really valuable ring because I am running so many cards. As long as I use one type of element, make sure I use a different one. I'm going to be doing 20% extra damage with that. And here's a really cool thing. Look, if I level it up, I'm leveling up spell damage. So uh, once again, I'm making my auras even stronger and all of my spell rings. Okay, that looks like a good ring. So you can see the, the thought process here. We're just trying to mix and match rings with uh, what's going to make sense for our build. Let's go, we'll go the AP ring, post-production thrift here. Um, obviously, our deck list isn't 15 quite yet. If we get it there, great. But uh, always check those requirements. In this case, you wouldn't be getting the plus one reserve action point for that ring. Uh, I filmed this really early in the morning. I apologize. <laughs> Let's go back and get to the video. And... Is there any other cheap rings we could do? 30% attack. Uh, let's see. We're deck 12. We're almost deck 12. We could maybe use this to reduce them by add one action point. Mm -hmm. Let's just do that. We'll do that and we'll add one more ring. And I think what we'll do... Yeah, let's go, let's go find one more spell. Uh, we have a lot of three cost cards. I think we'll just try to find another three cost. Is there any? I probably won't be that lucky. Oh, we do. Okay, here we go. We'll get another three cost card um, just so we could play more cards. And now this is going to draw two cards and they're going to cost one, act, one AP less. So we're going to have a lot of like two AP cards that can mix with these four AP cards. Cool. So there we go. We kind of have a, a ring list. We kind of have an equipment list. Of course, when you start the game, you're not going to have access to these rings. You're not going to really know what to do. Um, that's fine. As long as there's like one or two rings you have an idea of. And as you play the game, you're going to unlock more rings and you're going you're to have the same thoughts that I just had. Oh, hey, like. That seems pretty good. If I'm trying to combo, if you make them cheaper, I can combo more. I can get more powerful darts. Kind of the process. Now for the armband, um, 
my kind of my idea here is more spell damage. I want these powerful darts to be as strong as possible. So um, let's go. I know that there's a couple armbands that give me extra um, attack power, uh, just spell damage right here. Um, this says 40% damage if the target is wet, but it just gives me a flat 20% to my spell damage. I'm just going to grab that. It's just going to make my uh, darts even stronger. And you can actually see already, look, it says just 24 damage to the target. If I remove this, it does 20. So you can see that spell damage does improve the, uh, the, the stats of this powerful dart. So that's another way you can check to double check if things are looking like they're being improved. Look, it says 24. If I go over here, everything is green. That means that I have enough spell damage in my build already that it's affecting the stats on the uh, on, over here. So something else to consider. Uh, you know, another thing we could have done, we absolutely, it's lagging. We absolutely could have went in here and looked at some additional cards here. These would be really good cards to add to the build too. So, um, you know, of course, as you're acquiring um, points off of leveling, you can buy some of these really good cards. And these cards are going to replace some of these other random cards here. But there you go. Kind of got an idea of how to, you know, start the, the start the the building process. And you know, one thing is, of course, you're not going to remember these rings if you're looking at the um, at the list here and you're finding like, oh, hey, like I really like uh, this specific ring. Um, oh, wow, there it is. I want that ring right there, the, the Oracle ring. Um, I will link this down below. There is a website called the Waven Creator. It is not the most perfect website at all, um, but it does allow you to at least save. Um, equipment and I think that's pretty nice when you're starting out the game um, you can search for these I can search for the oracle oh, I think it's like that the oracle ring and it's not perfect it's kind of gives you a gist of what it is I wouldn't use this to like reference what it is but at least you can remember what it was that you wanted and it'll save here um, you can save the build or just kind of just keep this off to the side so you can keep hunting for rings um, this is not a bad way to just kind of uh, go through see some stats i would still use the game because it's going to be much easier to see and this is a I mean, like a beta website it's not perfect but uh just to just <laughs> get the equipment somewhere so you can remember what was what was i trying to build and then you can always just keep this to the side you know when you're looking at equipment here if you find anything that you like um with the chests right you can just very quickly just add that into your uh wave and creator and get the equipment what you want and that's what i would also recommend just to kind of keep yourself um and you and your build in line with what you want the one thing to remember is that in this game it's going to be a mix and match type of thing you're going to be going back and forth i haven't even started with companions uh but that's the process i would go i would start with passives your level 15 passive go into your spells, and then finally go into your equipment. This is where you're just going to take a long time. You may only have one or two rings that make sense right off the bat. Um, but as you as you get used to the game and you get more equipment, you're going to have ideas of where where do, where do like certain combinations of equipment really, really benefit you. And uh, yeah, that's what I'm going to say here. Here's the bottom line. If you have any questions about builds, feel free to hit me up on the YouTube channel or come over to Twitch while I'm live streaming such an easy way for you to ask some questions. I can pop into a class like this. We can kind of look at it together. Uh, don't forget to join the Discord. We do have a Waven channel and uh, we have a builds discussion channel. You're more than welcome to pop your build in there just so some people can help you, especially someone who's played your class. It's always very helpful to have uh, somewhat of a mentor uh, for that process. So uh, much longer video here. If you stuck to the end, I really appreciate it. Um, but yeah, guys, I will be see you. <laughs> guys, I will see you all in the next video real soon. Take care. Sayonara.